Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Guillem Castañar. Um, I currently work as a postdoctoral researcher at the Estonian Literary Museum. And uh, I would like you all to welcome to my talk about the cultural reputation and mental map of the place, Narva, in this case. Uh, and today I would like to talk about the Barcelona model. I have uh, named this presentation the Barcelona model, a model example. In this presentation, I will try to assess where Barcelona stands as a specific place more than 30 years after the Olympics, the event that caused the last vast remodeling of the city, but that also generated uh, long-lasting consequences for its inhabitants, and we presume a gradual change in the affective and ideological links that bounds them to the city that is still waiting to be properly researched. My assessment is rather critical, but uh, it is not new, and the dangers of the urban planning already devised and adopted in the 1980s, but enhanced in the Olympic and post-Olympic times, were timely and wisely seen by authors such as uh, Balibrea, whom I will be quoting um, uh, quite a lot uh, today. As for the structure of my talk, I will start by providing a very brief definition of the term Barcelona model, and uh, I will immediately move to um, elaborate on three constructs that, to my mind, help us to analyze, explain, and gain a better understanding of uh, this Barcelona model from different perspectives. Those are, namely, the notion of phantom borders, and the ideas of cultural reputation and uh, mental mapping. As for the Barcelona model, um, it's a term coined to refer to the major urban renewal and rebranding of the city, undertaken by several city councils uh, starting in the 1980s, sped up on the occasion of the 1992 Olympic Games and continued afterwards. Such uh, major modifications have been not only thoroughly studied, but also lauded. The general admiration that it has received in the last 30 years has generated uh, considerably bibliography in urban and architectural studies, but also in works about marketing and tourism. As of today, the term Barcelona model has gained official approval and is being copied on an international scale. Um, as stated, I believe that in order to explain the Barcelona model, we can rely on three constructs, the notion of uh, phantom borders and the ideas of cultural reputation and mental mapping. Phantom borders uh, designate the current performativity of previously existing historical territories and its borders that no longer exist. The concept aptly co-opts the medical term known as phantom limb syndrome, with, by which patients with amputated limbs still feel them. If we stick to metaphors connected with the medical science, we can then speak of Barcelona as a city to which history has inflicted severe bounds. In this slide, you can see, for example, the citadel in red that Philip V, the Borbonic candidate, built in Barcelona after his victory in the Spanish War of Succession, aimed at subjugating and controlling the citizens of such a rebellious city that had preferred uh, the candidate Charles of Habsburg. Bound eventually healed, uh, but turned into visible scars, carriers of a past that had to be overcome in order to think about the future. So to speak, the city could only move forward by uh, revisiting its past. Barcelona's modern uh, rebirth in the 19th century, was sparked by Madrid's eventual capitulation on the issue of the old uh, city's walls, a true hindrance to its development. The old uh, barricades became a topic of major public concern as the century progressed and started to come down in the early 1850s. Uh, in fact, as uh, we can see in, these, uh, in this document, um, issued by Pedro Felipe Morlao, quite a progressive um, architect of the time. Uh, he spoke of the advantages for Barcelona and its industry particularly that the tearing down of the surrounding walls would report. And he named his pamphlet uh, Abajo las Murallas or Down with the, with the Walls. 
Um, once the bulwarks were torn down, the city could finally expand and the district of Echample was uh, beyond the old bastions. Madrid imposed the now famous grid system devised but by another uh, Catalan architect, um, Ildefons Cerdà. The original utopian vision of Cerdà, along the lines of uh, Howard's Garden City, was not to be. Um, Cerdà had not counted on the relentless power of the nascent bourgeoisie's desire to maximize space and thereby increase profit. As we can see in this slide, only two of the sides of the octagons that conform this Barcelona grid were meant to be built. However, buildings were constructed on old sites, and as a result, Echample is nowadays uh, one of the most densely populated areas in Barcelona. Um, Barcelona's liberty from the confinement of the old city's walls grew according to practical concerns regarding the maximization of space and profit. Um, however, it was also important the aesthetic mandate governed by Luke that was also key to its development. This was later complemented with the construction of many modernista buildings in the new uh, neighborhood, thus increasing the appeal of the area. Later, the remains of uh, what had been the Bourbonic military citadel since the early 18th century, symbol of oppression, were turned over to the city council. In the map, you can see the layout of the fortress in yellow. Something similar happened this time, since it became a park, one of the few green areas that Barcelona has nowadays. Nevertheless, and although official rhetoric affirming that it was a service, a gift to its denizens, it was also to become one of the most visible elements of the incoming World Fair in uh, 1888. The 1888 Expo empowered the local bourgeoisie to think big. Importantly, uh, so the first large-scale influx of tourists to Barcelona. Thus, while the fair's most important legacy was arguably the city's recuperation of an urban zone that had been a center of oppression, its subsequent transformation into a cosmopolitan space would whet the urban appetite for more engagement beyond Spain's borders. It was a perfect excuse to show uh, Barcelona to the world. And as such, it can be considered the first serious attempt by Barcelona to become a world tourism city. Barcelona is um, often perceived from abroad as a stylish and exciting metropolis, a perfect site for the urban communities of the 21st century. As of today, the city ranks high in reputation if we understand reputation as the belief or the perception that uh, individuals have of a certain place or the mental associations about a place. In capitalistic terms, it is an important notion due to the increased competition among places to attract tourists, residents and economic activities. However, um, culture is but one of the components that make up the reputation of a place. Certainly, um, culture plays a role in the reputation of Barcelona, uh, but the study of uh, Carmos et Ali finds that the reputation of the city is determined by its quality of life and uh, its cultural heritage. This heritage is related mainly to the Catalan culture with monuments such as Sagrada Familia, but it is also influenced by the personal experience of the visitor that focuses on aspects such as the leisure options, the climate or the easy access to the sea. Regarding culture, it has often been invoked that Barcelona, uh, in Barcelona to undertake the reconstruction of the city. As Balibrea points out, the most important changes affecting the social body and the economy have been justified in the name of culture, which becomes their structural axis. The connection between culture and urbanism is established through the latter's capacity to create public space a public space um, rhetorically defined as uh, open to all, and therefore as a place of encounter and of the production of collective culture, squares, monuments, museums, theatres, uh, sport complexes, avenues, prominence, you name it. 
Culture in Barcelona is believed to have even a regenerating power of sorts. An example is the ensemble of two landmarks buildings. Um, the first is the CCCB, or Center of Contemporary Culture of Barcelona. In this slide, you can also see the uh, MAGBA, or Barcelona Museum of Modern Art. Um, they are both located in El Raval, which uh, was once a derelict and impoverished district, um, although very centric, uh, neighborhood of the city that uh, was supposed to um, benefit, um, regenerate from uh, the construction of such uh, cultural buildings. Besides culture, and as uh, Andrew Smith points out, uh, there are three key images uh, that were deployed by Barcelona and that helped significantly to its uh, enhancement. These key image themes, as Smith names them, are the modernista city, the sporting city, and the monumental city. The three themes have made an important contribution to Barcelona's image enhancement, and this reimagining seems to have occurred largely through the creation or reinforcement of memorable synecdochal images and the production of positive connotations has undoubtedly helped to boost the city's image. I believe that uh, a fine example of the combination of the three themes is this picture taken during the Olympic Games. And I'm really sorry for uh, its poor quality. Uh, the Picournel Olympic swimming pools were built so, so that while looking at the diver's performance, the viewers could also contemplate the Sagrada Familia in the background. Moreover, in the area close to the swimming pools, several highlights of modern architecture can be found, such as the Mondrix communication tower, which is uh, literally five, ten minutes away from these uh, swimming pools. I have taken an example related to the games, Precisely because the rebranding would not have come so easily without a deep resemantization, that is a long word, of the city that was possible thanks to the success of the Games, of the Olympic Games. Indeed, the event that has been most instrumental in the rebranding of the city has been the Olympic Games of the year 1992. Since it was nominated as a candidate in, the 19, uh, in 1986, sorry, the city was possessed by uh, what has been labeled as Olympic fever. The game secured the city's economic future and uh, justified the need to turn into major urban restructuring projects. The timing was also very good. Barcelona had already been working towards the presentation of a depoliticized urban image of city as a spectacle, and that coincided with a general shift in style and tourism trends. The 1990s saw a rise of superficial specificity as travelers looked beyond traditional package trips and uh, more at tailored travel experiences that would become increasingly mainstream by the 2000s. However, this is uh, not only a success story. The image production that arises from the Barcelona model is, on the one hand, a product of technocratic desire, development, speculation, transformation, and on the other, predicated on the promise of experience. This potential for sensation is where the look, feel, and taste of the city come into play. Unfortunately, for those residents of Barcelona who aspire to a normal urban existence, this focus on sensation, as both a side effect and progression of the Barcelona brand image, has had deleterious effects as regards quality of life in the city. There is a growing disjuncture between Barcelona, the imagined city of style and design, and Barcelona, the city where citizens try to live and walk. Increasing uh, flat rents and prices have had a serious impact on the local populace across the city um, in that people through the age spectrum found it impossible to afford to live in the city proper. 
Barcelona has become too expensive for the Barcelonese. Uh, the constant tributes paid to the city beauty have helped to distract the attention of visitors and citizens alike from other fundamental, much less satisfactory issues, employment, housing, public transport, or uh, even the questioning of the same urban projects whose aesthetic value is so intensely prized. For a long while, the rebranding of Barcelona um, found an echo amongst uh, the citizens. There seemed to be a full consensus with the city council's projects and the will or desires um, of the citizens of Barcelona. The dream continued in the 1990s as an after effect of the Olympic inebriation. Uh, and in that sense, Balibria's article is an illustrative one. She writes it while this alignment of the powers of the citizenry still existed. But uh, uh, this author already warns of the problems to come. The notion that the Barcelona model has mostly served planners, political elites and property developers is one that has begun to gain greater traction. It seems now that the consensus is breaking, if it is not broken already. It remains to effectively determine and measure the suggested cracks around the consensus, mainly driven after, during and before the Olympics. In that sense, I believe it is useful to resort to mental mapping. Um, as Agusti suggests, relying on uh, Lynch's already classical work, the concept of uh, mental mapping is conceived as an abstract construction that enables individuals to locate themselves in a place. In the process of uh, mentally mapping a place, valuable information of the place is generated and uh, that is what can be turned into uh, analyzable data. A mental map of the city is a representation of a symbolic nature that uh, arises from uh, the visual experience simplified in a mental draft. Not only visual, we argue, but also affective. As Bonfim and Urrutia suggest, citizens aim at configurating or translating territorially significant perceptions and feelings experienced in the urban space. The emotional territorialization of spaces is precisely what allows for the appearance of the sense of place. I find of significance the study conducted by these authors, by Bonfim and Urrutia, on the effective dimension in cognitive maps of Barcelona and Sao Paulo. Subjects uh, participating in this study uh, from both cities, uh, were asked to make a drawing representing their city and to answer some questions regarding the pictorial representations. Um, Bonfim and Urrutia's study might be a bit limited in its scope. Uh, it is, however, an attempt to produce qualitative data on the image that denizens have of their cities, and I believe that it is a path to be followed if we are to yield data related to the mental mapping and the cultural reputation of a given city. It has also another big plus. After a general trend of uh, top-down urban planning, such a task would be at least an attempt to revert to a more bottom-up perspective. Paradoxically, in terms of uh, phantom borders, the tearing down of perceived physical barriers has not freed space in Barcelona. The tearing down of the walls uh, created a design city on the one hand uh, that allowed for the creation of a cultural reputation that has been maintained until today. On the other hand, uh, has already set the pace for today's problems that can be expressed in terms of new demarcations um, albeit of a symbolic nature. As Smith suggests, the skewing of Barcelona's urban planning towards image development appears to have resulted in successful image change. Um, however, uh, that does not necessarily mean that this approach has achieved successful urban regeneration. The mass tourism model, the rebranding of the city as an experience rather than as a locus, has created symbolic barriers in the urban space. The not so long ago popular inhabited center is partially gentrified and at the same time depauperized. New dwellers, devoid of memory and tradition, take over the city. On the other hand, mental mapping 
can be a useful tool to find out uh, the shortages and the negative consequences of the branding process and uh, the transformation of the city into a touristic showcase. It can work as a uh, down-up process of multifaceted opinion gathering, much in the opposite direction of uh, what has been going on until now, with its hits and misses. The underlying idea in this presentation, I would argue, is that Barcelona has never been, uh, has been forced to slough off its physical boundaries several times during its long existence. Nevertheless, the overcoming of the barriers of the city has never been done for the citizens, but as an act of propaganda designed for the eyes of the foreigners. These, I suggest, uh, must be necessarily related to the fact that uh, Catalonia and Barcelona as its capital is not a state, but only a region within Spain, albeit enjoying a high degree of autonomy. Changes are always implemented looking abroad, seeking for a recognition that I boldly propose is not felt within the boundaries of the Spanish state. Um, these are my references. And uh, I just would like to thank you all for your attention, for being here with me today. And uh, should there be any questions, uh, I will hear them with pleasure and I will try to answer them if I can. Thanks.